This is the second section on um, discussing autonomous vehicles and transportation systems and the transition of all these smart city, automobile, transportation industries into the mobility industry. And this is the introduction mainly to ride hailing. Because in this section here, we're doing ride hailing, which is sort of the early harbinger of this area, and transport, we call transportation systems, which is the overall environment, which is closely related to smart city ideas, the overall environment that will control all these drones and cars and robots and everything running around doing useful things. So. Let's get started on understanding what Uber and Lyft said they were about to do. Thank you. And here is a sort of um, general general comment on the ride hailing problem. So what, what do you have to understand? Well, you better know when people will need them. And uh, that will help the people and also the drivers of the cars. Because the cars, the drivers of the cars want to position themselves optimally so they're near the customers. Um, and that's startled, as it points out here, that older people might need to be um, treated with less urgency than younger people. If it's wet, it makes a difference, or snowing. <coughs> the time of day is obviously critical, because the traffic patterns dramatically depend on the time of day. And the, the you know customers go use ride hailing as they're going to do to get to work every day. Then that it becomes a sort of it has to work. And of course you have to predict the delays the drivers will face in picking the customers uh, up. Well, we have to do everything securely because uh, this is this is, this information we're using is got. Um, customer specific data there, which could be uh, private. And we also know about uh, municipality because uh, the driver will make more money in some municipalities than the other. They get better tips and things like that. And uh, as we don't, the right handing companies don't operate everywhere, they should probably choose to operate in the areas they make most money. Uh, we want to make certain that we track every, the drivers so there are no scandals, and here is a link for the Uber technology. So we can um, get some information from the IPO filings. Both Uber and Lyft had in, uh, initial um, offerings recently. They actually haven't done very well. They've gone down since the offerings. <coughs> and it's. The IPO for Uber mentions AI six times, machine learning 11 times, and algorithm 16 times. <coughs> and says that data science and algorithms are very important. Well, so they have 10 billion trips. Well, that makes, um, that's big data. And the big data uh, from the history of big data allows them to make uh, marketplace decisions, where to put the cars and things like that. And it has natural language and dialogue systems. We saw that with retail, uh, that you need to have good um, automated interaction models. There's lots of computer vision in anything involving cars, because cars can be tracked by vision, and cars can use vision to drive better. Uber and Lyft both have a significant um, self-driving car investment, because they wish to be able to go into the to the business which offers a right hailing with self driving cars. And of course, uh, you can use um, machine learning for, based on sensor processing for looking at locations, examining crashes, and for matching drivers and passengers. You also need to do or have good routing technologies to get the cars to go to the best place. I remember times are uh, Uber's routing. <coughs> sent me off the left field. That was when the road between uh, Bloomington and Indianapolis was all messed up by construction. 
All right. So Uber and, and then presumably Lyft both have a very significant internal proprietary um, algorithms. And uh, notice Uber has Uber Eats and Uber Freight, and they also will use these technologies in somewhat different ways. Because uh, if you're doing Eats, then um, customers in a fixed place, restaurants in a fixed place, and you need to get from A to B in the best way fashion, best fashion possible. And uh, you need to know how long meals take, because they actually take quite a long time. When I was using some um, over the summer to deliver for our students, it took up to an hour to prepare meals. Uh, when I was in Milan, where the local taxi company had basically uh, tried to destroy Uber. Um, there were far too few um, cars and Ubers and taxis for the demand. And the pricing was right all over the place as they matched. Um, they put up the price when there weren't enough cars to match the demand. Um, it was actually quite stressful in Milan. Um, so. Of course, this is always predicting the future from the past. That's why these things are time series. You have data labeled with time and space. That's for Uber's basic data. And you need to predict things which are labeled by time and space. And um, Lyft tries to get the customers to go to areas where the drivers will make the most money, because that's the way the drivers will be happy. And Lyft and Uber both want happy drivers, do they not? Um, typically, if you ask your Uber and Lyft driver whether they're happy, they say, well, yeah, I'd rather get more money, but it's, it has interesting opportunities because it provides a very flexible work environment. All right, so if you want to build the actual app, there are many ways of building the app. The app is basically a user interface. Um, here is an article which actually tells you how to use a time, conventional time series algorithm to predict forward in time. Here is a large tutorial at, at this AI um, 2019 conference by Didi, which is the Chinese right hating company. And here's a one really wonderful tutorial by Yan Lu from USC, who works with Didi on um, more detailed aspects of the use of um, Deep learning and time of a time series prediction uh, using a mixture of concurrent and convolutional networks. If we look at this general problem we have, it's uh, we're trying to predict to the future in time, and we can want to do that for traffic, healthcare, progression of illness, climate, what have you. So these, this problem is a very generally important problem. 